Games can inspire many emotions. Fear. Oh, God, no. Anger. <laughs> that fiery sensation you get when you crawl naked like a crocodile over cheap carpet. True. But we both had less grey in our hair then. But just like real life, romance is a rare and precious thing. With this in mind, join us on The Scented Poof as the team recount their most romantic gaming moments. Rawr. I have to say, the most romantic moment in gaming for me is the ending of Uncharted 2. Up we go. I should probably start by saying that even after Chloe shot Drake and a double, even triple crossed him, that I did still kind of love her. You're gonna miss this ass. But it's Drake's relationship with Elena that um, really pulls at the heartstrings. Yeah. Uh -huh. To me, it's the one couple in video games that belong together. A bit like Woody and Bo Peep in Toy Story. They've just got that kind of chemistry on screen. After the end of the game, when he's carrying her up in his arms and he, he lies her down on it and looks at her, there was a point when I actually thought that she was definitely dead. Oh no, Elena. Oh god, no. But as the ending plays out, you get to that point where Chloe asks Drake... Do you love her? And you can see it right there in his face. He does and she is all right and everything's going to be fine. I've got a big smile on my face and that's a point that I really, really enjoyed. And I might have even done a little yes with a fist punch. I only really play sports games, so I can't really think of anything romantic that's happened in games in history at all. My most romantic moment on PS3 is a recent one and it occurred while I was playing Mass Effect 2. Whenever I play an RPG, I always opt to create the most beautiful woman I can. You don't need to know why. So having made my Siren of the Stars, I set about romancing the most beautiful woman I could find on the ship, which was Aussie sex pot Miranda. But Shepard, they'll follow her. She's a hero, a bloody icon. Sadly for my Commander Shepard, it soon transpired Miranda wasn't interested in a bit of girl on girl. What the hell was that? Next up, I turned my attention to Yeoman Kelly Chambers. And while she was interested in a bit of suffix space love, she was just a bit too easy. I felt she was a bit more like Homan Kelly Chambers. It's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. The next object of my romantic attentions was the Drell assassin, Thane Krios. He was kind of dead serious and a bit miserable. He would pray for forgiveness after he'd done an assassination. One moment, prayers for the wicked must not be forsaken. Always banging on about his dead wife who'd been murdered by Batarian mercenaries. Nonetheless, I had it in my head I was going to have transgressive alien space sex with Thane. I decided that was the way I was going to go. Forget humans, go alien. You'll never look back. Where shall I put my things? I'd prefer someplace dry if anything is available. And get him up to my, uh, my quarters, my space chamber. It's all about to happen. And he starts crying, like literally crying. My thanks. What poor old Thane didn't know is once we'd had this, I assume, pretty miserable rutting in zero G or whatever. I see. I went off behind his back and started doing it with Garrus, who was much more noble and kind of hunky. I'll radio directions if you need help. There's a cautionary epilogue to the story, which is that when I got talking to Dr. Morden in the medical bay, he said to me you should be very careful about having any oral contact at all with the drill race, because it can lead to hallucinations and awkward rashes. So uh, be careful out there, kids, and always wear your space jimmy. There was a bit in GTA 4 when I was sort of doing things with Michelle, and one time she annoyed me a little bit, so I ran her over. Life is complicated. Tragically, my most memorable romantic moment in a game is actually being dumped for having a tainted womb. Oh, look at that mess. It was in Dragon Age, and relationships were a big part of the game. And I'd sort of started having a thing with a ginger Templar called Alistair. I'll make the best of it, I guess. I wasn't really that bothered about him, and then he found a rose and gave it to me because, you know, it was the last beautiful thing left in a dark world. and. I sort of thought, all right, I'll give it a try. And I found myself really trying to impress him, talking to him all the time, complimenting him, laughing at his jokes. I just started giving him presents all the time. It was embarrassing, really. This from the woman who serves me my tea. <laughs> That's more effort than I've ever spent on an actual boy. Uh, calm down, good woman. He even got to the point where, purely to try and impress him, I'd made him king. I had to sort of do a few battles and a few quests, but he was barely your highness when he wanted to have a little chat in one of the castle rooms, and suddenly he's telling me that he can't go out with me anymore, that he's dumping me. There isn't any us. There's me, and then there's the woman who spared Duncan's murderer. I mean, just because I'd had to drink a tiny bit of Darkspawn blood at the start of the game, and all right, maybe I was doomed, and yes, maybe my wound was a little bit tainted and not good enough for his heir all of a sudden. There was that time where, in Streets of Rage, I think you could pause it and look up Blaze's skirt.
Heavy Rain's a game that had such clever characterization and really great animation that it really made you empathize with the characters more than any other game before it. I ended up actually doing two playthroughs of Heavy Rain. The first one just ended up mega sad, you know, everyone died, I didn't find out who the killer was, it was a disaster. So on the second playthrough, you know, I really tried to spend my time you know, taking care of his wounds and dabbing on the TCP really lightly, and it really reminded me of that scene in Indiana Jones where he's on the boat getting tended to, and it, it's just lovely to see how the relationship really blossomed there. In fact, the moments of tenderness in that scene were far more romantic than the slightly clumsy sex scene that came later on. Hang on. There is that manga movie in which Chun Li gets topless. That's definitely romantic, yeah? Oh. Phew, seductive work, team. Best for everyone if we all take a cold shower and eat a bowl of watery bran flakes. Until next time. Big thanks to the beautiful Walrus and Carpenter restaurant in Bath for the use of their premises. You shed tears. You shed a bunch of them. Tears? Uh -huh. It was raining. No, it was not. You were unconscious and it was raining. It was totally sunny out and you were bawling. It wasn't sunny. You were unconscious. Whatever. I kept your tears in a jar. <laughs>